And good morning, football fans. Tyler Cup on the Palmetto Preps podcast to run down the scores from last night. A little scoreboard show. I thought about doing one late last night, but uh, oh boy, the trip from Somerville, which is where I was to do the Lugol Felgen Somerville game in the 5A playoffs. Somerville got the win 14 to 10. It was probably one of the best games of the night, just looking at the scores here briefly. Um, I, that was an emotional wreck. I'm just going to be honest with you. That might be my last Lugolf Elgin game called uh, for a long time. I don't know if I'll call another Lugolf Elgin game as the voice of the demons, as I accepted a job in Rock Hill, as most of you know, listening to this. And um, so that was tough. Uh, I came back from Somerville and I was uh, I was pretty worn out emotionally. I had 67 text messages I had to respond to, uh, and I tried to respond to every one of them, Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I will be coughing intermittently throughout this, uh, so just bear with me. Uh, but yeah, let's go through the scores. Um, I've had a chance to kind of take some of these in. I haven't seen all of them. I've seen most of them. Uh, so uh, let's do my best to uh, go through these and uh, tell you what I think. Uh, and I think most of these scores are accurate. I know the winners are accurate. I'm taking this off the South Carolina High School League um, website. They updated the brackets. Uh, So I'll be able to give you some of the second round matchups as well with the winners of the first round games. I can already tell you some of these scores are a little off, um, but for the most part, looks like they got them right. So let's start in class 5A. Actually, that's class 4A. Let me pull up 5A. There we go. All right. So class 5A, let's start it here in the upper state. Lawrence knocked off Blythewood 43 to 40. This was the number one against the at large. And shout out to Jason Seidel and this Blythewood Bengal team uh, getting into the playoffs with the at-large bid and giving the top seed all they could handle. I think this game was 21-20 to at one point in like the third quarter, maybe midway through the third. I was watching this game uh, on the scoreboard on, um, uh, I believe it's the uh, score app uh, that updates some high school football scores and on Twitter. And, I mean, just an offensive explosion, apparently, in the fourth quarter. Josh Strickland for Blythewood had six passing touchdowns and 460 yards throwing in this game. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, but Lauren sneaks by and gets the win here over Blythewood. Uh, in the next round, it was uh, Burns over Nation Ford, 48-34. This one took a while. Burns was up big on Nation Ford, and it looked like the Falcons made a little run here. Uh, but Burns escapes with the win. Not escapes. I mean, that's still a two-score game. Uh, But Burns gets the win there. Reggie Shaw uh, getting his uh, uh, win as the coach for the Burns running Rebels. Uh, Sumter defeats Woodmont. No surprise there. Gaffney over Rock Hill, 27-6. That was one that I kind of thought Gaffney would get. Uh, You know, I saw this Rock Hill team a couple times this year. Was not that impressed. It was, was not the Rock Hill of old. Uh, but you know, uh, Gaffney is Gaffney and, uh, they get the win. They will go to Sumter next week. That's a very interesting matchup there. Uh, Dorman blanks Greenwood 35 to nothing. West side drops to spring Valley 37, 35. Wow. Not surprising that spring Valley won. <clears throat> Not surprising that it was a shootout, but the spring Valley Vikings have really turned it on as of late the last couple of weeks. I know I talk about Robin Bacon and Dan Morgan and that spread offense every week, but Deon, DeQuandre DQ Smith, this kid, I've said it before, is going to be a Mr. Football candidate in two years. He's only a sophomore. I think he threw another five touchdowns tonight. Uh, just an amazing performance. I heard an interview with Robin Bacon uh, on Twitter and said that the offensive line has played so much better from week zero to now week 10, week 11 into the playoffs. Wide receivers are picking up this new system. Uh, so shout out to the Vikings. That's a big win for them. And uh, Spring Valley will travel to Dorman this Friday. Uh, Clover keeps on rolling. They stay unbeaten. Knock off Boiling Springs 49-14. to Malden with the slight upset over T.L. Hanna, 41-35. to That was a shootout there. The Malden Mavericks advance and take on Clover. That is a very good game between Malden and Clover. Let's go to the lower state in Class 5A. Dutch Fork, no problems with Chapin, 55-10. to uh, Wando over Conway, 30-21. to uh, It was Fort Dorchester all over Lexington, 31-3. to I thought maybe Lexington would give Fort Dorchester more. I, I was worried about the Wildcat offense. Uh, scoring points here, and I was right. So, uh, uh, but I, I still think 
Perry Woolbride has done a great job with that Lexington team defensively. He does run the football there. If they can get uh, quarterbacks, some skill players, Lexington could be a team uh, to be reckoned with next year. Uh, Berkeley blanked West Florence 46 to nothing. Not really a surprise there. Uh, Carolina Forest all over Kane Bay 42 7. It was River Bluff uh, beating up on West Ashley. So you get River Bluff and Carolina Forest. I like this game next week. By the way, Fort Dorchester and Berkeley is going to be a daggone game next week. Uh, that's going to be a great game. That's at Fort D next Friday. Uh, but Carolina Forest, River Bluff, you've got. Uh, the great quarterback there who's going to East Carolina, Mason Garcia, against, for my money, one of the most outstanding backs in the state. He might be the best back in the state, uh, Braden Walker. He's headed to the Citadel. I've said it before. I think he's better than the Citadel. I think he's a, a, a low-tier Division One, possibly low-tier Power 5 back. I think he's that good. Uh, but uh, River Bluff, the great running game against the great passing game of Carolina Forest. Goose Creek down South Florence, so they will play host to Somerville. Interesting stat on this game. This game was supposed to be in the regular season in the non-conference part, Goose Creek and Somerville, but it did not happen because of uh, bad weather. That's why Somerville only played nine games this year. So Somerville and Goose Creek uh, will play each other uh, this coming Friday night in the second round game. Let's talk about Lugol Felgen and Somerville. I had the call of this game. <clears throat> Pardon me. I told you I was going to be coughing. This was tough uh, for Lugol Felgen fans. Uh, defensive ball game here. Uh, Somerville crossed the 50 twice. All right, They crossed the 50 on a 65-yard uh, back shoulder throw um, across the field. It was almost like a screen pass, and it was 65 yards. He caught it uh, just past the line of scrimmage and ran it 60 yards for the score. That's one time they crossed the 50. The other time Somerville crossed the 50 was on the final drive of the game. Lugoff Elgin had a fourth and goal at the one-yard line, and they decided to kick the field goal instead of going for the touchdown. And I had multiple coaches text me as I was doing Facebook Live. Coaches jumped on there and said it was the right call. Matt Campbell, the coach of Lugoff Elgin Demons, um, this was a tough decision for him because on two separate occasions in the first half, the Demons were inside the 10 but couldn't punch it in inside the 10, and could not get a touchdown. Uh, so Demons very well could have won this game something like, you know, 21-7, to 21-14, to 14, very well could have. They just could not punch it into the end zone back in the first half. <clears throat> Threw an interception, had penalties, had one touchdown called back, did the Demons, but they decided to go for the field goal. Somerville got the ball on their own 30, drove it right down the field, converted a third and 14 when there was a, a great coverage downfield on the play, and the quarterback ended up running for it. Sophomore QB for Somerville, remember his name, Colt Shirey. Uh, he's got a cannon for an arm. He can run it. Um, not the biggest-looking QB. He you know, might be uh, 5'10", 5'11", um, but watch out for him. He, he, he could be a good baller here in a couple years. But Somerville gets the win, and there was some controversy at the end. There were people in the end zone that said uh, the ball came out when Somerville was trying to punch it in. Demons recovered. One of the officials made the touchback signal, and I caught it on the radio. It was a fumble. I, the, the back judge, who had the best view of that fumble, saw the fumble, apparently. Demons recovered. Demons run to the sideline because they saw the official make the touchback signal. But the two other officials that were behind the play changed the call. So you take that for what you will. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Um, so Somerville gets the win. It, 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 listen, Somerville played well uh, defensively too. They they caused a lot of havoc on the defensive line. Uh, they got some very athletic linebackers. Uh, Taylor, I believe, Luke Taylor, I believe was the kid's name. Um, he had an outstanding night, had a couple of sacks uh, for the Green Wave. Very unique place to call a ball game there in Somerville. That's uh, one of the most uh, interesting venues uh, in the state. So there you go. All right, so 5A matchups in the second round real quick. Dutch Fork will play host to Wando. Fort Dorchester and Berkeley will do battle. That's a good one. Carolina Force hosting River Bluff. Goose Creek will host Somerville. In the upper state, Lawrence will host Burns, Sumter will host Gaffney, Spring Valley travels to Dorman, Clover will play host to Malden. Some good games there we'll get into on uh, the show next week. All right, let's look at the 4A uh, matchups here. 
not really a whole lot jumped out except one game. Um, a lot of people were surprised at Westwood beating Eastside. I wasn't. I told you guys on the show last week. I wrote about it in my Cola Daily article. Um, I thought Westwood was going to be your winner here, and they were. They scored 70 points in this game. 70-52, to 52, they defeated Eastside. It's a uh, record for most points scored for Westwood. Got to go all the way back to 2015 when they scored 50. So they broke the record by about 20. <laughs> so good for the Red Hawks there. Um, they will be matched up with D.W. Daniel, who beat Lancaster in the first round. In the other upper state scores, it was Greenville over Palmetto, 49-24. to They're matched up with Belton Honeypath, who defeated York. And the upset of the night in 4A, and maybe the state, I know there were some other uh, upsets, but Greer, the defending upper state champions, went on the road to South Point in the Rock Hill area and beat the Stallions 21-14 to handing South Point their first loss of the season, and it comes in the first round of the playoffs. Greer gets the win, and now you've got Greer taking on Wren in the second round. You've got defense against offense in that game. Um, in the other part of the upper state bracket, uh, two Midlands teams getting a win and will face each other. AC Flora came back to defeat Walhalla 36-26, Ridgeview beat Travelers Rest 33-14. to That game was tight for about two and a half quarters, and then the Blazers broke it open. So AC Flora and Ridgeview will play each other. That will be in Forest Acres. Um, well, that'll be at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, <clears throat> that'll be at Memorial. Uh, not necessarily Forest Acres. So AC Flora and Ridgeview, man, that's a good game there. That's a really good game, and I'm not just saying that because the Midlands bias. I think the Falcons and Blazers are going to be a hell of a ball game. Let's go to Lower State. I called this one. I told you to watch out for Marlboro County. I said that they would give Lower Richland fits, and they did. The Diamond Hornets still won. Lower Richland, the top seed, they beat Marlboro 20-14, to so a close game there. Airport over Collinson County 21-14. So now you got two Midlands teams facing each other again. LR and Airport uh, will face each other. I think they used to be in the same region not too long ago. Uh, Myrtle Beach will face North Myrtle. There's some region opponents going at it in the second round. Uh, Luke Doty, the Gamecock commit, got injured in this game. I don't know his status, but I believe it was something with his hand, his thumb. Uh, Hopefully he's able to get back. But Myrtle Beach, no problems with Lakewood, 63-31. Brooklyn Casey had the bye. They will face Wilson. That was a three against a two when Wilson beat Hilton Head. I called that one. I just think Wilson plays pretty good defense, um, and they've got some skill kids on the outside, and uh, the coach has done a good job there for Wilson. They will travel to Brooklyn Casey. Hartsville over South Aiken, 28-16. Hartsville will travel to Beaufort. Um, I like Hartsville in that game. I, I, I think Hartsville is, uh, is going to go on the road and give Beaufort some fits. So your matchup's in 4A. LR will host Airport. Myrtle Beach will host North Myrtle. Brooklyn Casey will host Wilson. Hartsville will travel to Beaufort. In the upper state, Belton Honeypath to Greenville. Greer will play Wren. Daniel will play Westwood. And AC Flora will host Ridgeview. Some good matchups in Class 4A. Let's go to 3A, where pretty much everything went according to plan except two games. Uh, And again, I'm going to beat my chest. Uh, Two games that I called. Uh, that I said would be tough for the opponent. Uh, Pendleton knocked off Southside. Woodruff, Oliver, Indian Land, 49-7. Uh, and then we get to the games I called. I told you that Chester and Newberry would be a ball game and that Newberry could very well knock off the defending 3A champs, and they did. The Newberry Bulldogs beat Chester 14-7, so Newberry will now go on the road to take on Chapman. Again, offense against defense. Chapman's offense putting up points, 50, 60 points a game, somewhere around there, and take on a Newberry team that you know gives up barely 14 a game. So that, that's going to be a good game there. Uh, Union County just gets by Fairfield 21-12. to tw- t- uh, 12, Pardon me, 21-12. Union County will host Chesney this Friday night. Camden all over Clinton, 43-14. to 14. <clears throat> Willis Lane had a couple of touchdowns. Uh, Micah Davis had a couple of touchdowns. I don't think Camden's going to have any trouble against Broom. I think they will advance and uh, face Union County uh, in two weeks. Uh, but still, uh, you know, Broom knocked off Powdersville 45-21. We'll see what Broom has uh, coming to Zemp Stadium this Friday. In the lower state, it was a four seed knocking off the one seed. Sherall 34-12 over Manning. 
you know, I said that this one would be tough for Manning. Sherall is one of those teams, like a Marlboro County, like a Fairfield Central, that I don't care if they're a two, three, or four seed, they're going to give you hell in the playoffs. They're going to give you trouble. They're going to give you fits. Um, so Sherall gets the win over Manning. Uh, let's see. It was Strom Thurmond over Battery Creek. Aner gets by Georgetown. May River defeats Swansea. Gilbert had no problems with Ridgeland Hardyville, 56 to 6. Uh, Bishop England just got by Lake City. No, pardon me. I had that wrong. Lake City defeated Bishop England. I hadn't seen that score. Uh, Wade Hampton over Edisto and Dillon, 61 to 6 over Walcom All. So your lower state matchups, Sherall will face Strom Thurmond. That's a good game. Um, Aner will play May River, Gilbert will host Lake City, and Wade Hampton will play Dillon. So those are your matchups in the lower state. All right, let's go to Class 2A, <clears throat> where we finish up here. Southside Christian uh, knocked off 96. Batesburg-Leesville defeated Central 20-6. to So that's another good game. Batesburg-Leesville is another one of those teams. If they're a 2, 3, or 4, watch out for Batesburg-Leesville. Uh, they will travel to Southside Christian. That's a tough matchup for them. It was Buford um, having a little trouble with C.A. Johnson. Uh, they defeated them 43-34. They will host Saluda. Abbeville scored 85 points tonight. 85. Uh, that's your highest point total of the night, boys and girls. Abbeville is going to be on a tear, but they will face a good defense in Andrew Jackson. I think Andrew Jackson has like six or seven shutouts this year on defense. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm close on that. Uh, so... Uh, Abbeville got the win, and they will face Andrew Jackson. The uh, Vols from Kershaw will travel to Abbeville. Gray Collegiate got the win as the four seed. Uh, no, excuse me, that's Oceanside Collegiate. I got those mixed up. Gray Collegiate won 42-7. to St. Joseph's beat Lee Central 49-27. It was Oceanside as the four seed going on the road and defeating Andrews 53, excuse me, 56-36. to They will face Whale Branch. Calhoun County will face Woodland. Barnwell will play Burke. And Timberland will play Bamberg Earhart. So those are your matchups in Class 2A. Um... Nothing really jumps out to me. I, I said this in the beginning that Great Collegiate, I thought, with their draw would probably make a run with Hunter Helms and KZ Adams there, but they're going to face Abbeville in a week. I think they'll get by St. Joe's, but more than likely it'll be Abbeville getting past Andrew Jackson, and that'll huh, – I'm telling you, Abbeville's stacked, man. They're good. They return a lot of kids from last year's state championship team. Um. I did not get into 1A, so let me run that down real quick. Again, I don't cover a lot of 1A. About the only 1A teams that I call or broadcast or cover is the state championship games. Uh, and I've got the call of those this year, so let's see how that panned out in 1A. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I should have pulled this up in the beginning, but I didn't. I had all the brackets except 1A. Let's see here. I know this is great podcasting radio. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, it was, boy, I, hard to even read these brackets. Well, let's give you the second round matchups. The second round matchups for November the 15th will be Whitmire hosting Ridge Spring Mineta. Uh, Macby will travel to Blackville Hilda. It will be Lamar hosting Ware Shoals. Wagner Sally will travel to McCormick. Baptist Hill will play host to Cross. Branchville, they got a win. They will go to Lakeview, who defeated Denmark Olar. It was C.E. Murray who got the bye. They will play Scott's Branch and Green Sea Floyds. Um, they will play host to St. John's, who defeated Bethune Bowman 6 to nothing. So those are your 1A matchups. Again, the big surprise is Greer over South Point. Uh, you had a couple of four seeds over ones. You had Sherall getting the win. Um, but uh, pretty good night of high school football. Fun night all around. Um, really good game that I had on Friday night. I don't know who I'm calling this Friday. Just going to be completely honest with you. I could be calling some teams in Rock Hill, uh, which I think there's only one left. Yeah, there's only one team left in the Rock Hill area, right? Um, yeah, it would be Clover. Yep, Lancaster lost, Any Land lost, Rock Hill lost, and of course South Point. So yeah, Clover would be the only team. So I doubt I'll be calling that game. I might be calling some games for the South Carolina High School League. I'm not sure, so... 
um, the NFHS network. But we'll see. I'll be somewhere on a Friday night calling a game or or uh, covering it at the very least. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys have a great weekend, a great Saturday and Sunday, and we'll talk to you next week. That's the Scoreboard Show on Palmetto Preps.